Hello learners, welcome to NIO studio. Today we will be learning about the claims and settlement process in insurance. So while moving ahead, first let us try and understand what is claim all about. When we talk about claim, it is the final obligation from the insurer's end in terms of the insurance contract. So when we talk about an insurance contract, there is a consideration and an obligation from both the parties, the insured and the insurer. The insured pays his consideration in the form of a premium and the insurer pays his obligation in the form of the final claim amount. This claim amount is of three types. The first one is the survival benefit claim. The second is the maturity benefit claim and the third one is the death benefit claim. Let us understand what these three claims are all about. When we talk about the survival benefit claim, it is not payable under all types of plans. It is payable in endowment or money back plans after a lapse of a fixed period. So it is payable after a fixed tenure like 4 years, 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years and so on in multiples of 4 or 5 years provided firstly the policy is in force and secondly the policy holder is alive. So these two conditions have to be met. The policy should be active and the policy holder should also be alive. Next we talk about the maturity claim. This is the final payment under the policy as per the terms of the contract. So any insurer is under the obligation to pay the amount on the due date and an intimation of maturity claim and discharge voucher are sent in advance with the instruction to return it immediately. So maturity claim ideally comes at the closure or the end of the policy. So when the policy holder is active and the policy is about to mature, there will be an intimation sent from the insurer's end along with the form which is called as the voucher which is to be signed by the policy holder in advance and then he has to return it so that they can process this maturity claim on timely. The third claim is referred to as the death claim. Now in course of the policy if the life assured dies during the term of the policy the death claim arises. If the death has taken place within first two years of the commencement of the policy it is called as the early death claim and if he dies after two years it is called a non-early death claim. So this is basically uh, insuring of the event suppose it's a life insurance plan and the policy holder dies during the tenure of the policy during the course of the policy during the premium payment term and the death or the event takes place then the death claim amount is given to the beneficiary and if this death claim takes place within first two years of taking the policy then it is referred to as an early death claim because there is a sudden death happening and there would be more documentation and interrogation taking place for processing the claim and if it is taking place after two years of commencement of the policy then it is called as non-early death claim and the normal procedures for uh, processing of the claim is followed. Now let us first understand what is claim documents and the forms and settlement procedure uh, involved with processing of these claims. The documents required for payment of maturity claim are as follows. First is the age proof if age is not admitted and this age proof can be of various kinds. It could be standard age proof or non-standard age proofs. Standard age proofs are those which are accepted in normal course of time and where these are not available or accessible we may take help of the non-standard age proofs as well. Standard age proofs could be something like your passport, driving license, ID card of defense personnel, school leaving certificate etc. and non-standard age proof refers to self declaration, horoscope, ration card etc. The other important document which is required for payment of maturity claim is the original policy document for cancellation. So you have to return that policy document so that someone else may not come with the claim. In case assignment is executed on the policy with a separate paper, then a document has to be surrendered and then there is also a discharge form which is duly executed. So we also have talked about the assignment process where you can assign the policy to some other person where the rights of the policy get transferred to the assignee. The person who assigns is called as the assigner who is essentially the policy holder and he assigns or transfers the rights of the policy to the other person who is the assignee. So in case the policy has got assigned then 
the separate paper or the document has to be surrendered. Discharge form has to be duly executed. Indemnity bond in case the policy document is lost or destroyed, duly executed by the policy holder and a surety of sound financial standing also has to be submitted. So, uh, sometimes it happens since life insurance is a long term contract extending to 15 or 20 years, you may also lose your policy document, it gets misplaced or torn or wear out. So, in those cases, an indemnity bond can be signed and you can uh, issue also a duplicate bond in that place and you can surrender and process the claim process accordingly. Now, let us understand the documents which are required for payment of a death claim. We had talked about the maturity claim. Now, when we discuss about death claim, there are some special procedures and documentation involved. Let us now try understand what are these documents like. Firstly, an intimation of death by the nominee or a near relative has to be given. So, the insurer has to come to know about the happening of the event. Unless the insurer comes to know that the policy holder has died, how can it process the claim? So, the first document which is required is the intimation of death by a close relative or a friend or employer, whatever the case may be. Proof of age if not already admitted, again this also has to be submitted to assure the proof the age of the claimant as well as the policy holder. Proof of death, this is also required, it can be in the form of a death certificate. Doctor certificate who attended the deceased during the last illness. So, if the policy holder has died of any illness and had been hospitalized prior to his death, then the doctor's certificate would also be required who has attended the patient at last. Identity certificate from a reputable person who has seen the body of the disease is also required. Certificate of cremation or burial from a reputable person who has attended the funeral is also required. Now, these documents are required in order to ascertain that yes, the death has taken place and, and it is a genuine death case because there are lot of fraudulent activities and frauds and uh, other you know criminal activities taking place in the form of claim from a life insurance policy. So, these documents are required to ascertain that it is a genuine claim. An employer certificate if any of the deceased is also required. In case of non-evidence of uh, title, a probate of the will, if the will has been executed by the deceased of the life insured, in succession certificate if no will has been left. So, these documents assure that there is a legal hire to the policy money. So, if the policy holder has left a will, then that would suffice as the purpose to make the beneficiary as the genuine claimant or in, in case if it is not available, then a succession certificate from the court will also suffice the purpose in order to hand over the policy money to the genuine claimant. In case the life assured has disappeared, he is presumed to be dead if the, he has not been heard or seen for more than 7 years. So, there is a presumption of death uh, clause which exists in uh, the legal terms in the law and that is here brought into picture. If the life insured has not been seen or heard for more than 7 years, then in that case he is presumed to be death and accordingly those process can be followed and he has not been heard for 7 years, then you can treat it as a death claim. In case of premature death claim, there are certain additional documents which are required like you know hospital treatment uh, details where the uh, assured was hospitalized in case it is a premature death claim taking place due to illness or hospitalization or you can also have the certified copies of post mortem report that would also be required if there is a murder or suicide or those types of cases. Now, uh, the police investigation report if death is due to any accident or unnatural death could also be called for because uh, in lieu of the hospital certificate, if there is an accident taking place, then the police uh, FIR or the investigation report would also be needed to be attached with the documents. Let us now understand what is the maturity benefit and what is the procedure for claim settlement for a maturity benefit. If the policy holder uh, has 
survived through the duration of the policy and has become eligible to get the maturity amount then it is called as settlement of the maturity claim so again you would have a discharge voucher which is to be signed and when we talk about death claim then what is the procedure which is followed is first there is intimation of death as discussed earlier from a close relative or employee or friend and then it is decided whether it's an early or a non early death claim as discussed earlier early death claim is one which comes within 2 years of commencement of the policy so if the policy holder dies within 2 years it is considered as early death claim and accordingly whatever documents are required for will be called for and if he dies after 2 years then it is treated as a non early death claim again produce documents and give claimant settlement statement also so once it has been segregated into an early or a non early death claim then the doc documents would be called for and the claim and statement will also be required let us now understand what is a premature claim and how does it get processed so as discussed earlier in premature death claim additional documents like the duration of last illness is of vital importance uh, to eliminate any you know fraudulent intentions because many a times it happens that life insurance policies are taken with fraudulent intentions in order to make profit out of the policy so to rule out such fraudulent claims and criminal activities some additional documents are being called for uh, like in the case of premature claim we need to have the documents like duration of last illness so how long was the deceased ill before he died and last medical attendance certificate is also required hospital's report and the burial certificate certificate from the employers and the employees leave record are also called for just to assure that was he keeping good health before death death or he used to fall sick and take medical leave uh, frequently it gives a credibility to the processing which is taking place to solve the death claim process and uh, then we talk about in case there is a, a rival claimant suppose someone else is also contesting to be a claimant for the insurance policy money the insurer can get a valid discharge by paying to the nominee so in those cases when there is a rival claimant also involved then the policy money can be paid to the nominee when we talk about premature claim if there is no nomination under the policy the insurer shall uh he would await a valid title through a will so the court's will will suffice the purpose in case there is no nomination which has been done for the policy if the premature death has been due to an accident it is necessary to get a police inquiry report as discussed earlier as well the investigation reports have also to be attached with the documentation so in lieu of the attending physician certificate when he dies in the hospital for premature claim Uh, again you know you need to attach this inquiry report along with the documents there is also something called ex gratia claim and claim concessions now what do we mean by these in ex gratia claim what happens is that when the policy has been in um, active state for 3 years and suddenly the policy uh, the policy holder dies and if he dies within 6 months Uh, of this tenure the policy has been active for 3 years and he has not paid the premium and he dies within 6 months then the policy will still be considered for claim processing and that's referred to as ex gratia claim and claim concession is another case where the policy has been active for 2 years and the policy holder dies within 3 months then the whole claim is um, amount is paid to him if he dies between 3 to 6 months then half of the claim amount is paid to him so, so likewise depending upon case to case basis the insurance company can give some consideration to such exceptional cases let us now understand what are the claim settlement options most of the claims are paid in single lump sum amount so that so there is a one time payment which is given to the claimant or the beneficiary when the event occurs there is maturity or death claim or survival benefit but in case of survival benefits as discussed earlier it, pay, it is paid on some regular intervals of time uh, otherwise when we talk about death claim or maturity claim it's a one time lump sum amount now this lump sum payment uh, 
it should be remembered that it does not offer protection against the creditors of the beneficiary while the payment through annuity payment does. So what does this mean is that when we talk about annuity, it is kind of a regular payment. So it comes in the form of pension to the beneficiary. So suppose there is a claim amount of say 5 lakh, then the, instead of paying the entire 5 lakh to the beneficiary, uh, the claim amount is paid in installments over a period of time so that it comes in the form of pension. Now this is again beneficial to the family holder because when you pay a lump sum amount it is there are more chances that it gets exhausted easily rather than when you give it in the form of installments then it is it they can make a better use of it. So that's the whole idea for claim settlement through installments. Now there are certain IRDA regulation on policy holders protection let us have a look at them. A claim under a life insurance policy shall be paid or be disputed giving all the relevant reasons within 30 days from the date of receipt of all relevant papers. So it has to be processed within 30 days whether it should be admitted or it should be rejected whatever the decision is has to be taken within 30 days. All enquiries has to be raised within 15 days. So in case, in case there is some missing document or missing proof, then these enquiries have to be raised within 15 days of time. For all delays in claim payments due to documentation, uh, the normal saving bank interest rate will be provided. So in case some there is some delay from the uh, uh, life insured's end or the claimant's end, then the saving bank interest rate will be given to them but any delays which is caused due to insurers you know procedural documentation additional 2% interest is provided because of the delay from the insurers end. So this provision is also there from IRDA. So hope learners uh, you got a good understanding of the claim and settlement process in insurance. Thank you.